So today we'll use the constants from last time to focus on these types of calculations. And in the process, we're going to be exploring the operators, I think, behave in ways that are unexpected or ones you may not actually be familiar with. Um, so we're going to start by calculating, given however many seconds we have, let's pick a number that's easier to work with. Let's say total seconds, the value of this parameter is 200 seconds. We want to calculate, well, how many whole minutes is that? So in 200 seconds, there are three whole minutes, and then there are 20 seconds left over. That's the type of calculation we want to do so we can present this to the user in a way that's more easily understood. Um, so this is the code we would write to do this. We would say, we, let's create a local variable called whole minutes to be clear what that represents. We would take the total seconds, and we would divide it by the constant we previously created, seconds for every minute. However, this division may not behave the way we would expect it to. So let's add a comment above this, slash star enter, and explain what we're doing here. We're actually performing here in Java what is referred to as integer division. And Java distinguishes between integer division and floating point division. So let's define that and look at some examples. So the perp what we're accomplishing here is we are using integer division to calculate how many whole minutes are in the specified number of seconds. Integer, so what is integer division? Well, integer division, and for those of you who are familiar with Python, integer division in Java is, behaves just like the double slash operator in Python. So integer division, like the double slash operator in Python, discards the remainder. We, call it, we say that it truncates. So if we get a value of 3.974, it discards that remainder, it returns the value 3, truncates it, does not round, throws out the entire decimal portion. Um, unfortunately, unlike Python, which has two different symbols for integer versus floating point division, Java only has one symbol. And so w the behavior is based on the types of the operands. And that's part of what makes this um, unexpected. So Java does integer division when both operands, oper, operands are integer types. By integer types, usually we're talking about int, but it includes long, short, byte, all of those. Java does floating point division when one or both operands are floating point types. By floating point types, I mean floats and doubles. I think a concrete example goes a long way here. So, for example, here are two examples. If we have 3 divided by 4, that evaluates to 0. That's the integer division because 3 and 4 are int literals. So because both operands are integer types, 3 is an int literal, 4 is an int literal, integer division is done. 3 divided by 4 is 0 0.75. We don't round it, we truncate it. We throw out the 0.75 and we return 0. That may be very unexpected, and honestly this leads to a lot of bugs. Um, on the AP multiple choice, they love to try to trip you up by throwing integer division into questions and see if you catch that it's integer division and not floating point division. Now, if we actually wanted to do 3 divided by 4 and end up with a result of 0 0.75, one or both of the operands has to be floating point types. So if we type 3.0 divided by 4, that will evaluate to 0 0.75. because 3.0 is a double 
literal. So again, if one or both types of the operands is a floating point type, it will do floating point division as we would expect. Where we get into trouble is when we happen to be dealing with integers, but we really want floating point division. Um, that's when we have to do some extra steps. So we have to make one or both of those operands into a, uh, a double. But in some cases, integer division is actually super useful. If we want the number of whole minutes, this calculates that. We don't want the fractional part. Um, we want the number of whole minutes. All right. The next thing we want, back to this example of let's say we have 200 total seconds, um, and there are 60 seconds for every minute. Yes, the number of whole minutes will be three, but we have the 20 seconds left over. We want to store that in a variable as well so we can print it out. Um, here is where we're going to use an operator with which you might not be familiar. We are going to use what's called the modulo um, operator, which I usually just call, and many other people just call the mod operator. You might hear it referred to as the remainder operator. So we're going to use that mod operator to calculate how many seconds are left over. The mod operator, which is the percent symbol, so that's going to take some getting used to, it returns the remainder of the division operation. And by remainder, I don't mean like a fractional part. I don't mean point like 0.33. I mean that if you think about doing old school by hand division and you end up with a quotient and you have a remainder. So 200 divided by 60 is 3 remainder 20, right? Think about when you used to do division like that. This operator returns 20. This, the use of the mod operator, um, it can be very useful when paired with integer division. The algorithm that we're doing right now to convert a number between different units and we end up with like whole parts and leftover parts, this shows up all the time. Pairing integer division and the mod operator together makes this pretty easy to write. Okay. Um, since this is new, I'm going to give you some practice. I'll do the first one. Seven mod 2 equals, all right, let me think, 7 divided by 2 is 3 remainder 1. So 7 mod 2 returns or evaluates to 1. You are going to do the next 3. 11 mod 3 evaluates to fill in the question mark. 6 mod 2 evaluates to fill in the question mark. 4 mod 11 evaluates to fill in the question mark. So 11 mod 3, okay, 11 divided by 3 is 3 remainder 2. So this expression evaluates to 2. 6 mod 2, okay, 6 divided by 2 is 3 remainder 0. It divides in evenly, so it returns 0. 4 divided by 11, well, 11 doesn't even go into 4 at all, so it's 0 remainder 4. We get the same value back as the left operand. We use the mod operator in other places as well. So here's another example just to keep in mind. We often use mod 2. Um, it is frequently, frequently used to test for odd even. So what I mean by that is if we do mod some number mod 2, if that number is odd, it evaluates to 1. If the number is even, it evaluates to 0. So you'll frequently see the, the mod operator used to check, hey, is this even or odd? Or is this a multiple of 3? Do mod 3. Or we might be doing something repeatedly over and over again. And every 10th time, we want to do something a little bit different. We can use mod 10. Is mod 10 equals 0? Okay. This is where we use the mod operator. It shows up a lot, actually. 
Um, it's pretty handy. So here's what the code would actually look like to have this variable left over seconds. So that is after we've calculated the whole number of seconds here, how many seconds are left over? Well, we take the total seconds and then we do mod. I'll copy and paste our constant seconds for every minute. So back to the example of total seconds is 200 and seconds for every minute is 60. 200 mod 60 would be 20. We have 20 leftover seconds. So if we printed out that 200 seconds was 3 minutes and 20 seconds, that makes more sense. We can wrap our head around that a little bit better than just a big number of seconds. So let's, let's calculate the other pieces we need. And this is a little bit of typing. I'm not going to scroll up and copy the paste the constants because all that scrolling I think is hard for you to follow. Um, but feel free to do that so you don't have to type all this stuff out. So let's calculate how many whole hours we have. The whole hours will be however many whole minutes we had divided by minutes for every hour. And then we want to know how many hour or how many minutes are left over. So we'll have left over minutes, which is the same expression except with the mod operator. Whole minutes mod minutes for every hour. And we're going to do the same thing for days. How many whole days do we have? Well, it'll be the whole hours divided by days for every, sorry, hours for every day. And then we'll have some leftover hours that we need to deal with. Same expression with mod. All right, so we have our whole minutes, leftover seconds, whole hours, leftover minutes, whole days, leftover hours. Next, we're going to have whole years, almost done, which will be the whole days divided by days for every year. And then leftover days. Poof. So that's a lot of integer division and a lot of the use of the mod operator, but now we've done all the calculations basically to present this to the user in a much more understandable format. So we'll be, do a big system.out.println here, and we're going to concatenate all this stuff together. So the average time to crack, and we'll do a bunch of string concatenation. We know how many whole years we have, so we'll include that, and then we'll print years. And then we are going to print the leftover days, say days, and then we'll print the leftover, it's got to be consistent with my capitalization. We'll then print the leftover hours, and print hours, and then the leftover minutes minutes, oh my, and then the leftover seconds and print seconds. 